Yeah, it's going to be an interesting morning, and so um, maybe you've heard rumors or, or know what's happened this morning, so it'd be, it'd be exciting, exciting um, to see how it works out. So let's do this. Let's pray real quick, and let's ask God to, to be with us. Right. So God, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, that you are, uh, that you are the one who directs our footsteps. In your word, it talks about how we, we go to take a step, but Lord, that you, that you are the one who places our feet. And Lord, I thank you that you are the one in control. So Lord, be with us this morning. Holy Spirit, um, be in this room, we pray. In your name. Amen. Hey, someone close that door, please. Thank you, Rachel. That was a good prayer, I know. Um, <laughs> hey, so um, no announcements this morning. Well, I guess there is one announcement this morning. And um, I'm going to start with um, the bad. And then I'm going to move to the good. Okay. Yeah, that's what I announced this morning. So this is the one announced morning. Um, okay, so this is the hard part for me. So I, I apologize if I begin to, to cry. Um, but uh, as of um, last week, Clay Community Church has gone through a restructuring, um, meaning that um, pieces of how we do family ministries are moving around. Um, Patty, you guys know Patty. Um, she was a formerly the... the CEO of Family Ministries, we'll say. And um, because of, um, she's actually going to be leaving, and because of her leaving, um, we are changing up the structure of how we do things here at Clayton Community Church. Meaning that um, Clayton Community Church has released me from being your yeah. youth pastor. Um, as of this Thursday, uh, it'll be my last Thursday with you guys. And what's happened instead, and this is a weird Sunday to be here, so I apologize. <laughs> um, uh, what's happening instead is that um, they are going to be restructuring. What's going to happen is it's going to be a, uh, a leader of student ministries and a leader of uh, children's ministries. And so um, leader of student ministries from now on is going to be Toby Nichols. And he's going to be um, our new fearless leader of 517. So what does this mean for you? This means this is my last Sunday with you guys. Um, and that's sad for me. This means this Thursday coming up um, will be my last Thursday with you. And that's that. I've loved you guys very much. And you guys have all, all been um, an important part of my life. And, and I am just so privileged to, to see some of you grow up from um, little, little runty kids to, to strapping young lads and, and girls. So, so somehow now, I'm going to try to turn this into good. <laughs> and this is going to be the best magic trick or whatever I've ever pulled in my life. And it is extremely difficult for me and, and Juliana. And Juliana's in the back. She's slow with tears. Um, and, and so <laughs> I'm trying to make likes, so yeah, I need to laugh. This has been an extremely difficult week for our family. Um, as you can imagine, our house is a mess. Uh, we haven't cleaned much. Um, our kids know what's going on. Well, Elias doesn't really care because he, he's just he's too little. Uh, Ellie knows what's going on. And so if you guys see Ellie, make sure you say bye. Uh, she was crying last night. We've all, we've all had a rough time. But for some reason, we know that this is good. Today we're going to be um, reading out a verse. I'm going to read a verse to you guys. And this is a verse that's found in John. And it's the only verse that makes sense to me to read today. And it's John 16, 7. And it says this. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. We've been talking about Jesus a lot in this group. And we've been going through this idea of miracles of Christ and who God was and all these great things he was doing. And as Jesus walked um, the countryside, as Jesus walked throughout Israel and was preaching this good news, he was doing amazing things. People were being healed of diseases that should have killed them. Limbs that were not growing all of a sudden became, you know, workable. Um, people that were dead for days were coming alive. The Walking Dead, but not quite. They weren't zombies. They, they were actually back to people. Um, and, and God was just doing amazing things. He was taking a couple pieces of bread, a couple fish, and feeding 5,000 people plus their families. He was doing this amazing, amazing stuff. And now he's saying to his disciples, it's better if I go away. It's better if I leave you. 
Freshman year of college, this is a story I've never told you before. Um, so this is be Ray, this is, this is awesome, okay? Freshman year of college, I um, started going to college, hey Brent. Um, and I, you guys, somebody, somebody knows my story, I did not want to go to college. I grew up in Oakland, California. There was no desire for me to go to college, okay? It's not ingrained in me like it is in you guys. You guys have this all like, hey, I've applied to 1,500 schools and you're going to this and there. I didn't apply to any schools. I actually took a year off and went to work. I became a manager at a fire company a fire extinguisher company. And, yeah, I made fires. No, um, <laughs> and, and what I did is I, I, I worked at this company and it, it, was, it was great. I was working full time, I was getting paid well, maybe better than now, who knows. I don't know, but it was, it was exciting. I was having a great time. And I met this girl. And this girl was awesome, she was beautiful. Not as beautiful as my wife, of course. Um, but at the time, this is all I knew. Um, and <laughs> we got into this relationship, and, and the relationship turned bad. You know, we started doing things that you're not supposed to do to your married. Um, I started doing things that were just not godly. And, and something happened where um, my best friend and my girlfriend became more than best friend and girlfriend, and I was alone. And, and so I decided, you know what, I just need to leave. And that's how I ended up in college. Not because I wanted to, kind of because I was pushed into that direction. And when I went to college, I was broken. <clears throat> Maybe some of you guys feel that way right now, but just unsure. I didn't know what was going on, and I, w I was just—I was just kind of doing this thing. And in college, I, I began to to meet God like never before. Because I see I had these two roommates. One of you guys know. Uh, one of me know. His name is Jared Upwall. He, he went to Vegas with us. He was one of my roommates, and that's we're good friends still to this day. And there was another guy, a little short Filipino kid, and I'll say really short. Um, and his name was Justice. And um, little did I know how much those two people would play a role in my life this next year. As I was at Bethany, um, I began kind of reestablishing this connection with God because it was gone for a long time. And Justice, my little Filipino roommate, was the ultimate God guy. Like in the morning, he would, he literally, okay, he literally got this little CD thing, set it in his bed with an alarm clock. And so that every morning his CD player would, would go off in his bed playing worship music, like at 7 a.m. And like we're in college, like, we don't wake up till noon, you know? And I was just like, what the heck is going on? This kid would pray all the time. He would constantly um, spend time with God. He would read the word, he would memorize it. Whenever we hung out and talked, he would talk about <coughs> God. And all of our conversations were constantly pushing me towards this God guy again. And it was, it was, it was awesome. Um, it, was, it was amazing. It was something that was really hard, but you know, something that was really, really good for me. I needed it. I needed someone there. I needed someone pushing. I never had really someone pushing me towards God before, and it was this awesome experience. During this time with Justice, this, this year uh, of him uh, being in, in our lives, uh, me and my roommate, there were times, of course, we were annoyed because we, he would literally play one worship song over and over and over and over again to the point where we're like, we're going to get a CD and we're going to break it. <laughs> and he'll never know. No, of course he would know. And, and so it was so bad. We, we one time got his speakers and hid them. We did all kinds of stuff because we were just like, dude, who is this guy? And he was basically like this, this, like I would call him, he was my Holy Spirit at the time. He was the one pointing me to God, constantly pushing me to be better. When I talked about things that I shouldn't talk about, he would be like, dude, what are you talking about? He constantly made me better. And he, he put me in this place where I began to know God again. This relationship was restored, and it was awesome. That's how awesome it was. Um, and then came the bad news. My relationship with Christ was based on a relationship with justice, <laughs> and because he was the one kind of pointing the way and pushing the envelope and making me go further. And um, it was very, very difficult when I heard that he couldn't come back to our school because um, his loan didn't come through. And he wasn't able to attend our school anymore. And more than a couple of us were, were sad because we're like, dude, what do we do now? Like, how does this God thing work? You know, we've been, we've been taught so long by justice. We've been pushed so, uh, you know, so much by justice. And now it's like, what do we do? And, and we were freaked out. And much like the disciples, 
They're hearing this from Jesus. Jesus, it's better if you go away. It's better that the guy who's done all these miracles, who has, you know, done all these crazy things, it's better if he goes away. How the heck is that better? It doesn't make sense. But it was. You see, there was something that was going to happen in the disciples' lives that, that needed to happen. You see, they were, they were following Jesus from afar. Jesus was kind of guiding and leading and pushing them. And, and yes, they had a relationship with Christ because Christ was there. But something else needed to happen. God's spirit needed to come inside of them and really begin to guide and direct them. You see, this faith needed to just to be with, with them and God alone. And when Jesus left, um, he said, hey, wait here until the Holy Spirit comes. So what we're going to do is make you wait here until the Holy Spirit comes. But he said, wait here until the Holy Spirit comes. And, and, and they gathered and they prayed and they met together. You can imagine their grief. You can imagine the feelings they, they, they felt. The, the one who led them was gone. What do we do now? But they were faithful and they wait. They waited. They were together as a community. They prayed. And just like God promised, His Holy Spirit came. And all of a sudden they were able to do it all the things that God really wanted and intended for them to do. You see, their faith went from being um, a follower to, to kind of really being a leader, to owning, a, owning their own faith. It wasn't somebody else's anymore. And when justice left, I was worried. I was like, what's going to happen to my faith? Where, what am I going to do? And it was actually one of the best things that happened because, you know what, I started pursuing God on my own. Um, and it was messy. There were, there were times where I, I began to step out. There was times I began to, to speak um, into people's lives. There was times where I screwed up and realized I'm still trying my best to be like God. And they were all good because slowly I was establishing my own relationship with Christ and walking toward him like never before. And because of those interactions, because of that time, that's why I am who I am today. I hope in my time here that I've been nothing but godly to you. I pray that you have seen Jesus through me. I pray that the, the way I've acted, the way that I have interacted with you guys, the, the things that I've said, have all caused you to see God like never before. To see God in flesh. Not that I am Jesus, because I am not. Not even close. But I'm trying to be. And I pray that that same spirit that was on me to, to, to try to step out on my own would be on you now. Because you see, I am leaving. And you know what? The greatest thing for me to hear would be this. That you have pursued God like never before. And that you are stepping out. And you know God in your heart. Like never, never, never before. You see, as I leave, the greatest testimony to, to what I've done here would be um, you hearing from you a couple years later, maybe down the road, maybe in college, saying, Mike, I know God. And it's amazing. That's all I've done these last six years here, trying to teach you about who this God guy is. Trying to be like him as much as I could. I even grew a beard. <coughs> And hopefully you catching a glimpse of what he's like. As I go, I know there will be tears as I cry myself. And the one thing that Jesus said to his disciples, you know, before he left was just to stay and to gather. And now more than ever, it's important that you guys stick together. It's important that your relationships with one another become even stronger. Because this is going to be a difficult time. You should feel hurt. You should feel pain. You should feel these different feelings. It's okay. They're not wrong. It's part of the process. Don't hide them. Okay? Feel them. Become friends. Deeper friends with one another. Encourage one another. Be there for one another. Talk to one another. 
You see, more than anything that, uh, that I've you know, tried to bestow besides Jesus is the idea of community, that, you know what, we are the church. You are God's people. You are God's family. And apart, we'll fall apart. You know, apart, we're nothing. But together, God does awesome. And you see, as the disciples gathered and they waited, and they waited till Pentecost. So Pentecost, uh, the, the root of that word, or the beginning of that word, the prefix is pente, which means 50. It was 50 days after the resurrection. And they waited, and 50 days later, after Jesus said to wait, it took a long time. <laughs> Jesus' spirit, the Holy Spirit, came, fell upon them, and their lives were changed. Just like when justice left and I had to start stepping out on my own and start making mistakes and start being vulnerable and start being whatever, you know, start being kind of a man of God. God slowly changed me to be more like him. And I felt God's spirit on me like never before. There was times where I could feel God speaking to me. And I, there was times where I could go up to somebody and say, you know, I feel like this is what God's saying to you. It was awesome. It was interesting. It was crazy. It was, it was good. It was good that he went away. And it's good that I go away. Because I'm excited to see what God does in you now. I want to read. Um, I'm going to real end really early, to be honest. And, and, and I'll have Jules say something in a second here. But I want to just read to you. This is one. Um, well, let me give you. Let me give you something to hold on to. Um, yeah, as I go, it's been hard for me. Um, but one of the things I want to leave with you is this: is um, our verse 5:17, right? We, we call ourselves 5:17, and, and our, um, our verse is 2 Corinthians 5.17, and you guys know it. Therefore, if anyone is Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away, but the whole new thing has come. Um, you know, there's this idea of this, this process that's going to be happening in us. And even as I go, this process is going to continue in you. And, and more and more, day by day, if you choose, you will become more and more like Christ day by day. And so I encourage you guys, as I go away, to think about this idea of 517 and what it means. To take it to heart, okay? To realize that you're going to screw up. To realize that you're going to fall. To realize that you're going to make mistakes. But yet, in the midst of your worst and your lowest, that God still loves you. And still wants to change you. And still wants to make you more like him. Because he loves you. So as I go, remember, as you talk about 517, remember what that means. Remember that God is longing to change you. And all you have to do is say yes and be part of that process. And I want to end um, my time of speaking with this verse, or these verses. And these come out of Ephesians. That's kind of Paul, he's end, ending his book with, this, um, with these couple of verses. And I want to end my time here with these couple of verses as well. So it says this. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm. Um, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on, e and on every occasion, and stay alert, and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so that I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for the Jews and Gentiles alike. I am in chains now still preaching with this message as God's ambassador, so pray that I keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Peace be with you, dear brothers and sisters, and may the God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, give you love and faith. May God's grace be eternally upon all of you who love our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, it's with tears that we end this time. But God, we know that in sorrow, God, that you promised joy, that you would turn our weeping into gladness. So God, as our tears flow, we, we know the promise of the future. The Lord, there will be gladness, there will be great things to come. 
God, we thank you for all the things that you've done in our lives up to this point. We thank you, God, that you are not done yet. But Lord, even as I go, Lord, you still remain. Even as I leave in my family, as we leave, God, your spirit still remains. And will still teach and will still guide and will still cause everyone in here to know you like never before. God, I pray for your hand of grace to be upon all of us. And Lord, the many questions that we might have that, Lord, you would answer. And God, more than anything, we know that you are the one that guides us. So Lord, we trust your hand in this process. We love you. In your name we pray.